Welcome back. Let's play uh, some more 10 minute games on Shogi Wars. I see we've got a fan here already. Where's the 100 win challenge? Um, I don't know. Good luck. How about the 100 video challenge? Oh wait, I already have 100 videos. Alright. If I move this up, that tends to make him nervous. Uh, right. Um, yeah, I can still do this. Hmm, dare I block my bishop? Screw it. Let's learn something today. Oh, right. They could go this other direction. Well, shit. Let's go this way, then. Um. Yeah, normally you drop back the bishop against the sword of aggression. Maybe that's still appropriate here? Shit, I don't know. Over we go. This is safe, right? Totally safe. Let's do this, because why not? I mean, potentially there's a very good reason why not, I just don't know it. Uh, but yeah, the 100 win challenge. That seems like a lot of wins. Um, so you mentioned this in reference to what you just mentioned a minute ago, which was... Uh, trying to do this in some span of a month or a month and a half or something like that. How some popular live streamers doing that. Um, that seems quite ambitious. All right, so I need a way forward here. I'm going to get dunked on in just a second here. Mm -hmm. So I don't see anything better than actually executing that exchange. Um, I'm not crazy about it. Okay. I did not see that coming. Wait, why am I caring about that? I guess it's because it's my rook. Well, that's something. They're trying to trap my horse. Um, I 
Hmm. I should return the favor, right? All right, I'll take one of those for free. So I just got a gold. Just for being patient. I got a gold star. All right. Um. Let's remove this. Put a threat right there. Give them something to think about. I guess I have too many things to think about here, and I'm not thinking. And that makes two of us. Um... So, like, they have this really scary pawn promotion thing that I have been ignoring because I didn't want to deal with it. I can't completely ignore it, however. So, we're going to try to deal with it. Did I even count? Uh, no... Perhaps I need my coffee. Um. Well, that's something. I don't know what we've done Go here. Um, there's too many things to count on this board, I think. Counting is quite important. Um, we're going to block the rook again. Oh, the only prerequisite for a hunter challenge is uh, to be able to count. I see. So yeah, we're talking about multiple things here. Because um, I had started to think about, like, why are these combinations working or not working? You have to count the attackers and defenders. And there's, it's such a mess. Um, my opponent has many interesting ideas here. Wait. Okay, so if I take that, I die, right? Probably. Yeah. If I don't take it, I probably also die. Um. Okay, if I take that, they promote. If I take... Um... Check, I run over here. I don't know. Takes, promote, take, silver, here. It's scary. If I just run into the corner, uh, silver, I'm in an equally dire position. Oh, I guess they have rook takes here. Alright, so... Well, I Both times I failed to consider this move, but... Um, I don't think it suffices. Alright. 
So if I get time, maybe I drop another gold or a pawn or something to try to shore up my castle. Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, they're threatening silver drop on my head, so I probably want to move my king. Uh, not a lot of options here. Wow. Amazing. All right. Well played, sir. Well played. Thanks for the game. All right, one down, two to go. Go figure, the one time I work out all the technical issues with my live stream, I get mated. That's fine. Good luck. Of course, I'm alluding to the previous session where I had a technical issue. Um, but other than that, things went really well. But yeah, I had this really nice series of three games where I got lucky, I guess, all three. And then um, at the very end, I was able to hear some 81 dojo noises. And it made me wonder, wait, have there been 81 dojo noises throughout that entire broadcast and I just didn't notice? I don't know, but it seems like there's just a lot of details to pay attention to. Um, but yeah, this game, I should consider building a castle. Alright, there's my... oh, hang on. If they push this too far, things get tricky, so let's uh, say no. You don't get to push this for free. Um, let's continue building this out. I mean, they, I guess, did the same thing to me, right? So uh, I could consider pushing this again if I really feel aggressive. I'm not sure why I would feel that aggressive right now, other than their kings are right in the middle. But I'm not sure I could checkmate that. But yeah, our last opponent played really well. I hope they promote out of 2Q very soon. Communication. Okay. Well, that's quite unfortunate if that happens. Yeah, this is shaping up to be... Okay, good. Good. Uh, we still get to play this out. Um... Yep, there's my castle. Alright. Um... Hmm... Put some pressure over here. Uh, let's put some pressure right on this bishop. Wow. Okay then. Um, so they prevent my rook from moving out this way. I can still, like, protect my king's head and threaten to hit here, or I don't even know where I'm threatening. The rook could move here, here, or there. It protects a lot of things. This pawn is still... okay, they removed the pin. Um, but that means I just get to take this now. Let's take it. Let's clear the way for my bishop. Uh, wait, if I drop this, they retreat the silver. If I drop it back here, though, they move this gold up, I sack it, they bring the gold over. I don't know. Wait, they have one pawn in hand. Um, I guess I missed my chance to bring the rook out on this file, didn't I? There might not have been a chance. How oh, do I make progress? Um,
Yeah, this is not the most secure position I've ever seen. I just don't know how to attack it. Nanafun. Well, this is not a terrible start. I'm greedy and I want more than that, but this is not a terrible start. Welcome. All right, so they move their king. do something. I don't know what. Oh, wow. I want that. All right, let's take it. So before they've had a chance to complete this castle even, I strike the gold and the knight. Alright. Next, I'm threatening to take the silver and then the rook, but also the lance is hanging. Um... Admittedly, I'm a bit concerned about this rook drop. I don't know how serious it is. <sighs> After last game, I'm a bit on edge and concerned that, you know, this side attack while they're also attacking from the front could be quite serious. But, like, I can't have, I can't be paralyzed by that fear. Okay. This I'd not even considered. Um, so I can just build a really solid castle here. Um, Go food. I guess that's what I'm going to do. If they try to save the silver, maybe I drop a knight and try to save this pawn. I don't know. That seems crazy, but like, what else should I do with the free tempo? I don't know if they try to save the silver, maybe I try to save the knight and bring it into this attack. Um. Maybe I should have just taken this and let that hang directly aligned with my king, but that seemed a bit much. Oh. That's a curious way to try to save it, isn't it? They can... There's one file they can drop a pawn on. Um, hang on. I've got a knight, and I'm afraid to use it. Hmm.
All right, screw it. Let's do this. How bad is it? Show me the damage. So next I'm threatening to take the Lance, then the Silver, then the Rook. Of course my opponent's not just going to sit there. Um, but if they move the Silver, then their Rook hangs. Meanwhile, this Rook doesn't have anywhere to go either. I should be aiming for the King, but it seems really well defended, and I don't have a Pawn in hand. So I'm being extremely patient. Perhaps too patient, but like, what can I do? Oh, fuck. This promotes right there. Alright. Well, I deserved that. Um... Sounds there's a million details to keep track of. And I'm not a ma machine. Just a human. So, we've made this task much more complicated. Fine. There's nothing I can do. I can defend my king on this diagonal, perhaps. This game would be easier if I could remember everything all at once. So now our opponent has a knight. Mm -hmm. All right, out of interest, let's get a proverb up here. What's today's proverb? Drop a pawn on the focal point. Yep. Sure would be nice to know what the focal point is. Sometimes it's obvious. Here, it doesn't seem so obvious. So next my knight and lance both hang while I still don't know how to attack this thing. Um, hmm. Nifun. All right, this is the way to fight against a knight. Um, can 
continue fighting. Mm -hmm. Obvious check is obvious, but what else does it do? It protects the lands. But this bishop's vulnerable. Um, I forgot if they take this, they get a gold general in hand. I read out the variation minus this gold. But yeah, they can just straight up take that. And I need to do something. Oh, that's also checkmate. Thanks for the game. We'll play two games down, one to go. But yeah, these combinations where an opponent, good luck, where an opponent acquires a piece and then is immediately able to attack using said piece. These always catch me by surprise, and they shouldn't. This is just fundamentally how the game works, and I'm fundamentally misunderstanding it. Alright, we're going to play a different opening this game. Having bungled the opening two games in a row, we're going to try to play something different. Um... Alright, we've built a castle today. We built one castle. Hooray. Mm -hmm. Let's expand it out. Don't know what that's for. Diamond Mino.
so here our rook seeks to promote and then attack stuff. The opponents built this really solid, compact castle here. Um, so I can take this, they could open the diagonal, and I could close the diagonal, and they could try to reopen it. Um, that's one way this could go. I could bring this silver to support my rook. Um, then they open the diagonal, and then I don't know. It's not so complicated. No, if the bishop exchange happens, it is complicated. Mm -hmm. Silver, pawn, silver, takes, takes, bishop, draw. Rook takes, yeah. Yeah, that doesn't look good. So, if I try to close the diagonal, they'll try to open it. No, we're just going to take here. I could take this bishop if I really wanted Not to. I want it. Let's do it. It's a nice bishop. Sure, in many positions, a rook is worth more. But is this one of those positions? I have no way of knowing. Now if I take that, no, we're not taking that. Um... We're just going to attack one move faster. I'll just imagine that speed is everything. And hopefully it is. Because if it's not, I could be screwed. Um, okay. So I just gained a lance. I could use it immediately. Um, not sure what else I could do. Let's use it. Why not? I mean, science is about trial and error, right? And if I don't know anything... We can conduct an experiment to learn, one loss after another, which moves are the worst moves. Um, it's one way to learn. You can also learn from other people's experience um, to the extent that we can see what they do and they teach us what they know. But yeah, this is a tough game. Um, so I, I could promote here, or even there. Promotion doesn't do any miracles, but I don't know that I need a miracle here. Go <sighs> Gofun! That's clever. How can my opponent always find clever moves? How do they know so much? It's like they've played this game before. Um. Alright, so what's the counter to this? Lance drop? Is that it? Where would the lance even drop here? Maybe back here. Uh, 
Oh, I mean, yeah, that's a place for a Lance to drop, sure. Um... I'm finding creative ways to make my position more dangerous. Maybe that's not where my effort should be focused. Oh, thank you very much, Alexi. Yeah, I look forward to seeing it. Somehow I thought this bishop lined up with that square. I seem to be off by one. Yeah, it lines up with my king now with that square. Um... That's safe, right? Splitting up the castle for some sort of a cause. Um, incidentally, I earlier considered retreating my horse back here, which would have walked immediately into this fork. So, well, at least I dodged one thing this game. So next up is pushing this... oh! Alright, there it is. Pushing this pawn to defend my king. Um... Not sure if I want to take that. We'll find out in a minute how bad it was to not take that. But no, this knight is hanging. Um... I don't know, man. There's too much to look at. Not enough time. Oh, that's a fork. Check that out. One good fork deserves another. I forgot the pawn was here, otherwise I could have exchanged the horse for a dragon, but that's probably fine. What are they going to do with the bishop? We'll find out. Stay tuned. I mean, they got two dragons, they got a bishop. What have I got to worry about? I don't have so many liabilities as they do. Uh, but yeah, now I can drop a lance in front of my king and hope that it checkmates them when they're not looking. I guess that's the plan. 
let's start with that. Maybe I should have hit this. I don't know. Um. Let's find out how bad a move this is. I'm filled with indecision, so I play something that's probably just objectively bad. Um, what? What does that do? I have no idea what either of us are doing. So... They're not going to put their bishop in this king line. But the bishop needs to defend this point. Okay, yeah, I guess now they could line up their bishop with their king. Without losing it. Um, but that costs a tempo. Sure, why not? Um... I don't know, man. Something like this, maybe? Let's ask where this... Oh, this isn't even a fork. They moved their king there. Whatever. Um, I don't have time. That was well spotted. Nijibio. I can't resolve all this in my head anymore. I pick up a piece and then later pick where am I am gonna move it. Um, hang on, it's this first, then this. Jubio. Thanks for the game. <sighs> well, can't win them all. We can lose them all, however. Funny how that works. Quite the series. Yeah, almost hooked him. Almost. If I just had another five minutes on my clock, you know, almost could have had it. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's quite... A range from one Q to one Don. They're hanging out at one Don zero percent. So either they just promote it or they're having a rough time of it. But I wish all of us the best. Yeah, they were motivated. All right, very nice.
So yeah, I hope you enjoyed these games. Let's now take a look at what Alexi has to share. I'll copy this link, put it in my browser. Oh, after promotion, you start at 20%, so you're not likely to immediately demote. Interesting. Let's see. Oh, shoot. I didn't mean to hit that. Um, all right. So my badge blocks this overlay, and then further, I can't have this filter on. Um, I forget if. All right. So let's see. Ah, so here, this count was about the game as opposed to the parallel conversation. So um, Bishop takes silver. Alexis mentions, um, he asked if I had counted, I should do some calculation not to determine um, who has the most attackers, who has the most defenders, um, but to determine in this attacking race, this semi-I, um, who is doing better. Okay, so if I'm not just playing out of impulse and rage, but if I'm trying to figure this position out, um, let's see. Here's rook take, or rook drop, here's bishop takes 6 4. And this is the point at which, or before which, um, this counting is relevant. Um. I had done the vaguest of counts and concluded that my position was dead lost. Um, that probably was not responsible of me. So, um, yeah, this rook, where was the rook drop 8 8 being a big threat? Where did that show up? Here. Or 5 8 pawn is a promotion is a big threat, which, yeah, I completely missed the first time around. Um, let's go back. So, yeah, by my count, my position is just like hopeless. They have a strong castle. Even if somehow I manage to get to the king, it's going to escape. I attack it from the left, it's or from this the right, king's gonna escape this way. If I attack it from the side, it's gonna escape this way. They're gonna move the bishop. So I estimate I would need how many turns would I need to actually checkmate this king? My guess is I would need 10 free turns where they did nothing for me to have something that resembles a checkmate on this. In contrast, this rook drop pawn promotion, uh, pawn takes and rook takes is mate. So they, their attack seems to like checkmate me in four moves. I estimate it would take me about 10 moves to construct a checkmate against something like this. So I'm down like six is my guess. Um, so yeah, by my account, this position is just like utterly hopeless and I don't know what to do. Uh, so, uh, let's take a look at this variation. Actually, are there other variations first? Yeah, Lee Shogi dropped me into that position at that point, but let's, let's start at the first uh, point at which we have a comment. So, the opening did go well for me. I have Sabaki for my bishop. It's quite active. And um, I win material, and I get play for my rook and my silver. That's interesting. I didn't think the rook was so active. The silver here, absolutely. Um, even the gold's not doing terribly here, even though it's floating about. But yeah, the rook and the silver are doing well here. Um, on 8-6, yeah, so he's built an attack, but it's a couple moves behind how this attack would normally flow. So I just kind of ignore it. Um, so an alternative to this pawn 8-8 drop. Really? 
Um, okay, is this the only... Okay, this is the suggested... Or this is the, let's think about it, alternative here. Pawn 5-4. I mean, I do have two pawns. I have nothing defending this, but it still could be considered. So one defense is silver 4-4, four, four, another defense is silver 6-4. On silver 4-4, four, four, um, another free pawn. How does this game work? Okay, but yeah, I did get the pawn, so I'm not like without pawns in hand at the end of the combination. And that does build quite a lot of speed. So yeah, this lance drop aims right at the castle. That's quite effective. Um, here, this cuts off the horse. Um, oh, but then loses this silver here. So those are two ways this could have gone. Uh, if they, yeah, these are two candidate moves. You would prefer one or the other. Moving the silver to 6-4 keeps the bishop unblocked. Moving it to 4-4 four, four tries to defend the king. Um, but there are good counters to each of these. Um, so then the game proceeded. I played a lot of slack moves, and my opponent built a very quick attack. And yes, this is a huge threat here, and I missed it. Um, so, gold drop 7-9. Wait. Uh, huh. Wait. Wow. Okay, so this... Yeah, that's amazing. They have two pawns in hand, so it's not like they could just hang the rook to promote this and take that and all this. Yes, yeah, this, while this attack is quite swift, I don't see a decisive breakthrough after this gold move or drop. Huh. It's quite unusual that I can use such a heavy drop so far for my castle, and it actually does something. Um, so... Sorry. Um... So yeah, the skull drop is quite relevant and saves several tempi, and then I can build an attack as well. Um, that's cool. I threaten six five pawn or five three silver. Oh. Okay. Yeah, six five pawns seemed to allow bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes sort of stuff, so but the point with this advancement is that um similar to something I was trying to consider in the game, I could force the silver to move away and then drop or move to five three next. I like five three silver as an attacking idea there. We achieved this position. Bishop takes six six. Oh, uh, was played. Yeah, so this clearly is the strongest threat in the position. Assuming that they'd seen this, I would have been forced to... Oh, I had another gold. So I'm not mated. But I'm forced to offer up a gold for a token. They whiffed on it. Um... I was quite satisfied to find this. Uh, the pawn 5-3 promotion is worth considering. Sharp stuff. Um, I think their attack is much faster here. 
Oh, but this... Mm. Mm. No, I'm sorry. So Pa 5.3 is worth considering, but it's not good enough, so that's why we did this. They did this really heavy bishop drop, and I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on here. Um, so if I'd taken this, they can take this and then promote, and I made it. So I tried to offer up a defense. Here, if I'd run, yeah, my defense collapses there as well. So, when defending a bad position, I need to avoid a line strike. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe this could have worked. So, yeah, in the main line in the game, this is how it played out. We all saw it happen. And I just didn't believe that there was a mate here. I was astounded to see this move. And then I realized that's not my pawn, that's their pawn here, and I'm dead. Um, so on account of that, um, this has to be considered... Um, however, uh, one possibility at yeah, five eight. Oh, okay, five eight bishop. Sorry, I commented earlier thinking five eight bishop was a really heavy move. Um, but no, this is the clever way that breaks down my castle as demonstrated all, both by the game, but also by this attempt. Um, so this checks, and this threatens to mate. Um, Rook takes knight. Oh, that's cool. And then, well, okay, if silver takes... Um, yeah, and then the knight mates. Okay, and the silver takes without promotion. This is tempting. They could take my silver next and threaten... How many silvers do they have? Oh, I see. Okay, I've never seen this pattern before, believe it or not. But a silver drop of 1-7, knight takes, and then silver advances, mate. So that's pretty severe. Uh, pawn two sixes, so try. Um, <laughs> wait, okay, yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, so after this pawn two six, bishop four four as possible. Um, hmm. I mean, this entire... So, like you're pointing out, this is a sub-variation. The main variation is with gold takes rather than silver takes, and that happens to work out. But in this tempting line... Um, how does he continue? This is less clear. So therefore, they would have had to find some precise moves had my king not taken this and walked into a mating net. And so... One possible continuation is if I counterattack. I'm surprised. Um, I'm not sure about this counterattacking idea, but sure, we can look at it. Um, yep, so that's a mate. Um, so if gold drop, that's not so clear, but if we dodge this. Oh, I see. Here we're illustrating that this is a defensive move, this is an attacking move. Yeah, I would not prefer the attacking move here with my king so severely threatened and my attack not going anywhere. So yeah, this king 2-7 makes more sense. Looking at our chat window... Yeah. Yeah. 
that makes sense in principle what you're saying that in defense like yeah certainly when i've attacked a number of times my opponent has defended quite well and so i want to do the same um and i failed to do the same because in the game what i thought was an excellent defense is just walking into mate I saw everything up to this point. I didn't see this silver drop. If they didn't have the silver drop, I'd be fine. Um, even back here, like, they need that silver drop. Um, and here they got one, two attackers, and I've got the knight defending it. So, I thought I had this square under control. And I don't. Um, yeah, this is a... Here, what I did is either a combination of one or two things. One possibility is that I counted this out and read that I have a knight, a king, and a silver also on the same square protecting this. So I thought I had three defenders. And they have two attackers plus a silver if they drop it. And I thought I was winning this capture sequence. Uh, that's one possibility. The other is maybe I just forgot this isn't my pawn, but it's their pawn. But yeah, if, like, if they couldn't do this silver drop, this entire defense is quite resilient. But there's one good move that crushes this, all of this. Generally, it's extremely dangerous to walk right into a wave of the opponent's pieces, and this is no exception to that. But I thought it was an exception, but it's not. But yes, yeah, so usually, for most beginners, I would advise, don't walk right into the wave of the pieces. Unless you're sure you're fine. Even if you're sure you're a beginner, how sure are you? But yeah. Um... So, uh, it's rough, but um, yes, this is one variation here, this silver 2-8. Um, so, as a practical matter, without the silver 2-8, they have to find this. Um, and then, if I take the dragon... This is check. This and with the knight they mate. So there's a lot of details here. But yeah, they played well this game. Um, they're on their way up to 1Q. Uh, so kudos to them for that. For put a, playing such um, a resourceful attack while my attack just kind of sat there not doing anything. I had a really nice opening for once. Um, it was kind of amazing. So, unfortunately, the rest of the game was not quite as good as my opening here. Yeah. Yep. So, a uh, very sharp game. Very cool. I see that Lexi has added another game here. Um, I guess, I don't know if... Uh, yeah, okay, so he's commented this as well. Yes. Yeah. As usual, I tend to attack uh, and just continue attacking, and I neglect my defense. And it makes for entertainment, but I should do better. If I play better... They'd be better entertainment for everyone. Let me flip this. So this is another one of my losses today. Um, yeah, I think this is game three. Pawn 7-5 was a good move. Okay, yeah. What was perhaps less good is that I sat on this move for quite a while before playing it. But eventually I did resolve to play it. Um, but yeah, I lost like a minute or two thinking about it. 
Rook takes seven seven is an interesting try. Oh, pawn five five. I thought about like silver four four, pawn four four, knight three three, bishop four four, bishop seven seven. Pawn five five is really cool. I like it. The thing I didn't care for about pawn 4 4 is, as I mentioned during the game, pawn 4 5, and just like this is an extremely tense position. Pawn 5 5 like breaks this, um, and suddenly their bishop's pinned, and I'm not under a very severe attack. This is really cool. Yeah, I didn't even see 7 3 knight here. Um, um, but yeah, the bringing the knight out and then threatening to hit the bishop with the knight, that's one idea. I'd be more inclined, I guess, although this is probably risky, to just bring the silver out and hit the bishop and the rook with the silver, but that probably gets my silver stuck in a pin. So, um, yeah, pawn 5-6, and they win a pawn, sure, but yeah. Clearly, this is a better way to go. Wow. Also, the silver 1, 2, 3 turns to hit, or as this knight hits in 2. Um, so, another alternative to rook takes was bishop takes. I didn't care for this because, oh, I don't have to exchange rooks. I have a pawn in hand. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want the rook exchange to happen, but I could stop a rook exchange from happening. Okay, and yeah, sure they could drop the, oh, well, hang on. I don't know that I would do this rook exchange, but Lexi says that after this, this is a good position for me. This bishop is trapped, uh, so this does work out in my favor. That's cool. Um, yeah, without that, it's really a mess. Okay. Sharp stuff. Um, yeah, 7-7 seven, seven bishop was natural. Alright, so let's go back to the game. Ah, so yeah, this exchanging here. Mm -mm. I... Yeah, keeping the bishop in hand it has a lot of merit. Um, mm. Okay. The pawn seven six here. My mouse wheel scrolling all over the place, but yeah. Um hmm. like I strongly prefer their castle to mine. Their knight I guess their knight doesn't find shelter very easily. Yeah, I was extremely uncomfortable with this position, but maybe it's fine. I don't know. Yeah, pawn 7 6 is resourceful. I need a resource like that, so the idea is not so much about trying to get the knight, it's about promoting the pawn and trying to break this down. My king has more breathing room. I guess what I don't like is that I've had dozens of games 
where for whatever reason this gold that's the base of the mino is forced to move and then like everything collapses all at once so that's one thing i don't like the other thing i don't like is this wide open diagonal my king is not on the diagonal that's a good thing but it's just scary this prospect that you know at some point um either the diagonal itself opens or the line right next to it um gets is prone to attack and it's not so easy to defend so i need to attack because this is not as solid as this shape yeah four piece mino okay so there are other mino castles like we've looked at uh, here we got tower mino we've looked at high mino with the gold here we've looked at just regular mino and half mino um four piece i'll have to look that up yeah one thing I like about them is because in a in the context of a blitz game, if you have a really compact castle, it's generally going to be difficult for your opponent to break it down. There's a lot for them to think about when they're attacking it, whereas um, when you have a wide castle, there can be many targets that are all hard for you to think about how to defend and they just have to find one and once it collapses then the next thing falls the next thing falls and so forth um so that's kind of the dilemma um there's just blitz is kind of a crazy thing to be playing in the first place it's more not to enjoy the game, I guess, but to test your skill. Like, what's going on? Uh, to see, to test your reading ability and such. This is useful, but uh, improvement in a blitz time control is really not realistic. You need to play slower games if you're seeking to improve. Although learning from other people's experience can help a lot, too. Um, but yeah, here we can see all my weakness was much easier in a blitz game than you could see in a slower game. Um, but that's cool that... Um, yeah, I think because this promotes, there's some potential here. Um, so if I promote the pawn and then try to join it with a rook or a bishop somehow... That has some potential. Granted, they immediately get an initiative from dropping a rook over here or a bishop over somewhere. I don't know. Like, everything I have is going to be hanging. It's not easy for me to defend. And I don't have any obvious target, but other than this knight, and the knight's going to escape. I don't have enough knight, enough pawns to trap the knight. But yeah, this uh, far and away though, I prefer the pawn five five try. This is beyond interesting. This is compelling. This, uh, especially in light of this really awesome bishop trap tactic at the that prevents a rook exchange from being forced. Sorry, I hit the wrong key on my keyboard. I meant to hit the left key. I hit the down key, which took us to the end position. That said, like, this is still deeply uncomfortable here. Uh, as the opponent pointed out during the game, they doubled the rooks, and it's not so easy. Um, another idea, I don't like this so much because it gives away my only pawn, but I could consider this too. This is less good than Alexi's ideas, but this is another idea that, you know, if I, for whatever reason, want to activate my bishop, and I want to keep my other bishop in store, this is another idea. 
So yeah, bishop a8 was very bad because my other bishop back here didn't get active, didn't see its full potential. Here this hits one move faster. Um, and then I still have the option to drop my bishop whenever, wherever I please. That would have been better than what I did. But yeah, the uh, his other suggestion, pawn 5-5, five five, looks amazing. Anyway, back to the game. So I've allowed this position, and I just... Here I'm already overwhelmed. So I saw if I move the silver to hit this dragon, they exchange either taking this gold or taking... Well, they would take the gold, of course. Um, so is Lance 5 won my best move here? Silver 6-2 is... Remarkably not death. Okay. Strange. Anyway. Um, here my position's solid. I did drop the lance in there. But yeah, the two bishops couldn't find a way in. Of course, I'm looking at every knight drop and every pawn drop and just absolutely not seeing anything. Uh, how does this... Or rather... Just out of interest, if I had done this other pawn drop thing, I don't care so much about the number. Um, but like, what are some ideas? Rook 7-2, knight 7-3, no, bishop 9-2 drop, I'm trying to defend them, yeah, okay, so I don't have a compelling attack here. Hmm. I mean, we know that I like the rook, right? So the notion that I was willing to part with the rook at all was a bit not... Yeah, maybe I just lost my mind after giving up the rook. Maybe. Yeah, I should have taken the rook, because two rooks are actually quite strong here. And the two bishops, I've never really tried to attack the sort of castle with two bishops before and now it's pretty evident as alexi points out it's really hard to attack this and now we've got the evidence to prove it but um yeah that's embarrassing oh my all right so yeah I had a severe blind spot. I thought I was winning the dragon for a horse, which is not really winning material in any real sense. Because these pieces are inactive to begin with. So if I hadn't lost my mind, defending this way could have been a, a good attempt. Um, they have pawns in hand. They don't have like a silver to drop, a gold to drop. They don't have anything right here. So for the attack to continue, they would exchange and then break, try to open this way. Yeah, they only have one piece and two pawns in hand. Hmm. Why did I panic here? I don't know. All right, pawn three, five, could try this. Yeah, that did cross my mind. And the time I had remaining, yeah, so these dragons haven't broken this yet. They still have to promote this pawn and try to smash this this way, but like it's not so easy for them to break this wall. This is a pawn 3-5. I guess their bishop can't really pierce... Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't think they would take this 3-5 pawn. Um, so... Possibilities... That the defender has are pawn takes, promoting the rook. No, I'm sorry, the dragon 7 1 to escape the fork and then set this up. Pawn 5 6 is mentioned as an alternative. That I didn't think about. Here, like, my primary thought was, like, somehow they would drop the bishop, exchange it for this silver, and then. I thought they had enough rooks and other pieces to sack a rook for 
the gold and the lance. It's too much to give away, isn't it? Dropping a bishop here, taking the silver. And then any sort of continuation is just too heavy. Hmm. So yeah, pawn 5-6, if I retreat, pawn drop 6-5, bishop takes, then they could take this, yeah. Alright, anyway, the main line, maybe a beginner might take this pawn. And alternatively, if I tried this lance drop here, yeah, so that's, this doesn't prevail. Um, they could promote this, or they could move their dragon, and I could attack this way if they're generous. Oh. Okay, so basically if they lose a turn, this actually contains a much more potent threat than I thought. I didn't see this. Now granted, I don't have a gold, so I can't like move the knight or drop a knight and drop a gold and expect that to be made. Um, I don't have everything here, but that's, this actually has a lot more potential than I thought. So, hmm. So if I were stuck defending this, what would I do? I mean, well, okay, one thought I'd have would be I don't like this pin, so I'd want to drop my bishop here and resolve this pressure. But that's not the... you don't need to do that because there's this alternative here um, which also resolves this pressure. Note that if I take the pawn, the dragon hits the horse. So yeah, I have to step off the diagonal. Um, but this would have required some resourceful play on my opponent's part to find these moves. Yeah. Yeah, this is good for me to play things that force the opponent to come up with good, resourceful moves. Maybe the opponent forgets um, just what potential I have here. Maybe they get overconfident. A lot of things could happen. So it's good to play the game. Give them challenges to solve. Um, yeah, I didn't realize that... Um, this knight drop could join the attack. Of course it can. I just didn't. It, it's a lot better than I thought. Because otherwise I'm just encouraging this pawn to hit my silver, which is the only piece which is defending my king. I guess the horse is kind of defending it too. But yeah, there's actually a nice continuation there, so... I didn't manage to put up much resistance. Um, uh, silver 4 6 is what I played. Um, pawn 3 5. Yep, so this is still present. <laughs> Amazingly, this knight has nowhere to go, so this should jump out um, as a very strong candidate. It's up to me to make challenges for my opponent, even when I have no time to think and even less time to move. Um, it's my task to come up with things. Rook 7 9. Okay, yeah. Surround the king. Yeah, that would have been quite reasonable. Yeah, so we conceded the game at this point. Um, you don't win by resigning. Um, but yeah, at this point, I'd, <laughs> I'd had my satisfaction with this position. But um, yeah, there's, even here there's things I could do to try to make it interesting. You don't win by resigning, but I have no time left to move. Um, 
So yeah, I could have dropped some knights to try to surround the king. Of course, they can just drop one piece to block my rook, and I've got nothing. But I've missed my chances. This is the last real chance here. And so, yeah, if they block, then I've got quite an attack. If they don't block, um, or rather if they block like this or something, uh, then maybe I've got something over here. So, yeah, this would have been a very reasonable try. They haven't yet hit my king, so I can still continue attacking. Yes, if I tried this, then the king can run away. Um, but, yeah. I'm winning. Okay. Um. Hmm. Let's check. Okay. Wow. Okay, yeah, that works. Amazing. I have just enough pieces here. Well, no, I have more than enough, actually. Wow. Okay, so the king does not escape because the rook promotes. That's pretty cool. Huh. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's not so much they had a time advantage, it's that I had, like, not enough time to actually move the pieces. Because I had not managed my time well. Um... Okay, yeah, oh, yeah, this is the cleanest way forward. This cleanly wins. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah, so it sets up multiple mate threats. And there's no defending it. Yep. So, resigning is not a way to win. For me to m take a piece from my piece stand and place it on the board, on average, takes about two seconds here. So, yeah, I could not have executed a mate, but could have tried for it. Uh, our opponent was pretty rattled by my time situation. A lot of opponents on the site do that, where if I'm in severe time pressure, suddenly they're the one blundering into mate, but then I don't have enough time to checkmate them. Yeah, eh, could be worth it, maybe. Or maybe you just accept that, you know, you win some, you lose some, and you win more games when you play good moves. Okay, yeah, and then this here, when I um, exchanged my rook for a bishop, and I thought this is a really creative, interesting idea, and I've never seen it done before, that, like, normally everybody does either the bishop exchange for a bishop or a rook for a rook here. I've never before seen the, the sacrifice that I played, the rook for the bishop, and just keeping my bishop on this diagonal. Which actually doesn't go anywhere. And now we know why, because the bishop pair can't attack that castle very easily. Whereas this rook pair was able to force me to drop my lance where I didn't want him to drop it, and I just had a very difficult time of it. So yeah, this bishop exchange, now in addition to being the thing that is played quite frequently, well there's a reason it's played quite frequently, it's because it's best. So, play the good moves. There is some room for artistry, but, you know, 
If you get too creative all the time, you're just going to get busted. So. Work for bishop without compensation is just bad. Huh. Okay, so it's... Hmm. Man, it's hard to keep track. There's a lot of positions where you want to exchange one piece for two pieces. There's a lot of positions where it's fine to exchange a gold for a silver, or a lance for a knight, or a knight for a lance, or like all these exchanges are possible. But this very, very large exchange, um, I guess, is more significant than the rest. But yeah, I guess, absent other circumstances. I thought this nice open diagonal would have been a very good circumstance for the bishop. Like, this position looked just really difficult to use a rook on. And looked like there were a lot of places bishops could go on this board. Um, okay, so yeah. I guess, yeah, you're right. I didn't have to give up my rook in order to use a bishop effectively. I just got caught up in the moment. I thought I was being creative. I was being creative, but it was... It was bad. This is just as creative. And this is good. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Maybe. Yeah, so... That makes sense. So, yep. I don't know what more to say other than thank you very much uh, to Alexi and uh, for the many comments here. Also, transport. Thanks for chiming in here and there. Um, yeah, you've got to attack the enemy king. Well said. So, hope we've enjoyed these games and the post-game analysis. Uh, there's a lot to learn, and yeah, as much as I freely experiment, you know, I also play a lot of these moves quickly without thinking deeply about them. So when I offered my work for the bishop without thinking deeper, maybe I should have thought about alternatives first, because um, this would have been a really nice alternative. If I'd seen this, I would have played this. I just didn't see it. So, I have to think more about that. Hope we enjoyed that.